Nostalgia. By definition, is the yearning to return to a past period. This could be a memory or a sudden feeling of homesick. We have all had that moment where we are sitting on a couch or maybe laying in bed and we can't help but remember the good old days and how much we want to be back there. The problem with nostalgia is that it can be wrong and almost a false feeling. For example, when I was 19, I joined the military and I moved across the country. Eight years later, I was medically released because my legs no longer worked properly. And my entire career, my spouse and me had reminisced with nostalgia about how amazing it would be move, to move back to our hometown. Needless to say, upon my release, we did exactly that. We went back to our hometown, and now a few years later, we're living right back in the town we had left when I had released. Why? Because the window of our mind and the nostalgia feeling were wrong. Our hometown wasn't amazing. It was expensive to live, had a massive homeless problem, the drug population had gotten out of control, the hometown we remembered was no longer there. I tell you this to set a precedence to my new series where we will look back on fond memories I have of gaming and try to see if we can recapture that feeling or maybe see if that feeling was wrong. Let's look at this as an experiment, one where the only one who will be changed is me and my perception of my own childhood. I am Shorty Index, leader of the Rant Army and video game advocate. And I love gaming. Gaming has always been a massive part of my childhood and adulthood for as long as I can remember. I used to wake up early before my siblings and rush out to the living room and turn on the, my original Xbox, load in my favorite game and play until my parents woke up. I love these moments of me being by myself, entering a virtual world where I was in control of the narrative and I got to do things that I just simply could not do in the real world. Now one of those games I used to play when I was younger was Destroy All Humans. A game about an alien invasion. A game where you get to be the bad guy. A game where you can probe human beings. A game where in the first few minutes there is a cow pooing. I remember this still to this day, but I can never remember why. Maybe it was the flying saucer, the humor, hell, maybe even the story. Or maybe it's nostalgia and we're thinking about it all wrong. Let's look into this. I just want to do a quick disclaimer. This will be a longer video as we're delving into the entire game and if it brings back the feeling of nostalgia, not just an overview of the game. We want to see how much of the game actually reminds me of my childhood. So in this video, we will be playing the remastered version developed by Black Forest Games and released in 2022. The game claims to be an exact clone of the original with just upgraded graphics. After playing it, I can safely say that I am pretty sure that, that th this is the exact same game I had played as a child, just graphically better. And I'm pretty sure that graphically, this is how my brain pictured it back when, you know, TVs weren't so high end and you played on a 13 inch and thought that was a big screen. A quick blurb of what the game is generally about, just to set the foundation for the rest of the video. Then we will get right into the actual gameplay portion of this nostalgic review. We, an alien race called the Furions, have started an investigation to find a clone that had crash landed here before us. During Cryptos, that's our character's name, investigation, we uncover a world of government cover-ups and human population manipulations. Now, we are not the good guys in the story, so we end up stopping the human government, all so we can do it ourselves. With the foundation laid out, let's start the review. The first screen we are welcomed with in Destroy All Humans is a disclaimer that the game that we are about to play is the same experience as the original and that it has only been upgraded and that the humor may be upsetting to modern human minds. I can say that a lot of the humor would be offensive. If it was this game was made today, it would... Nah, who am I kidding? This game never would have been made today because it would have offended literally everyone for some reason or another. All right, moving on before I offend people. We are then greeted by a black and white TV broadcast talking about aliens contacting the world. Then it shifts to a military testing base where an alien is flying over and then crashes. So far, I actually remember this and I'm pretty sure when I was a kid, this is exactly how I pictured these graphics. The military base scene ends with the alien falling over, defeated and injured, captured by the US government. It's Roswell, they just call it Rockwell. Uh. We now get to meet our main character, Crypto. Crypto learns that his clone has crashed and that has been captured by the US military. Crypto also learns that his kind is facing extinction due to his species having a DNA corruption that will cause them to lose their immortality. This is the first issue I have that was kind of annoying. Everyone kind of sounds like they're talking out of a radio in this cutscene. Dead end than your predecessor. You lost me. 
Shall I tell you a secret? Few of our people know this, but the DNA patterns in our cr It's kind of jarring, but does get better as the game goes on, or maybe you just get used to it. It kind of really makes you think, what happened here, that they couldn't fix this from the very start of the game? Or maybe, once again, this is nostalgia, and this is always how the game has sounded. One thing to note is that the voice acting is actually really, really good in Destroy All Humans. Even in the remaster where it sounds like they're coming out of the radio, you can tell that the voice actors are very competent in what they're doing. The voice acting pairs well with the Cold War era America, and it really sets the atmosphere well. We now get to select our mission, and off we go. Selecting a mission in Destroy All Humans is actually quite simple. You look at a map of the United States, and you get points of interest to explore. These missions are very linear when you're doing the actual mission itself, but then you can go back to these locations and do extra quests and challenges, as well as collecting drones in a much more open area, all to get more DNA to upgrade Crypto and his ship. I like this way of doing open worlds better than most games that come out now. It gives you an open area to explore, but also eliminates the giant sprawling nothingness that would be in between each point of interest in games that come out today. It also allows the development team the ability to make the area that you can go to feel more lived in and flushed out. A real big win coming in from the Black Forest here. I can say that each of the different worlds that you go to, or levels, does feel like an actual city or a lived in area in Cold World era USA. It allows for much better design when you do small instance areas rather than sprawling giant areas like say Assassin's Creed Origins where there's a lot of emptiness. Our first mission is on Turnip Seed Farm. This is our tutorial mission and it will be simple and can be a very hand holdy but the cutscenes are funny and the place is quick so it's over pretty fast so you don't have to worry about the game holding your hand too much. Also cow pooping. We are tasked with reading cow's minds because us being new to the planet think that they are the species in charge. This is where you figure out that Crypto is smart but not in charge and his boss is not smart but in charge. Simple to understand but it's kind of a trope in video games and movies. After reading the minds of the cows, we give our dominate the earth speech. Attention earth creatures. This planet is now part of the Furon Empire. Your benevolent masters welcome you. At this time, we wish to abduct you for the purpose of scientific research. The procedure will be protracted and invasive. Do you have any objections? Earth creature, I am addressing you. Respond or be vaporized. Get pooped on and start the tutorial. In the tutorial, we learn to use our minds to throw enemies. We have an electric laser gun for fighting and a spaceship for aerial combat. I will say that the spaceship camera placement is odd. You kind of feel like you cannot see the whole time. This will continue throughout the game and super inconvenient in later game where you need to fight bigger enemies in more confined city landscapes. Also in the tutorial, we learn about how the wanted system works and destroy all humans. It goes like this, exclamation mark means that enemies are aware of your existence. And then the cop symbol means that cops will come after you and chase you throughout the city. Then it goes to the military that will bring in enemies with automatic rifles and tanks. And the last is the majestic, the absolute highest form of wanted. These guys bring in psychics, lasers, guns, and other tech like giant mechs to stop crypto. Majestic is a group you will fight the most throughout your gameplay as they are kind of there to be your exact enemy as well as also do everything you're doing that you're going to do as an alien. They're already doing as humans and you're just going to stop them so you can do it. After destroying Turnip Seed Farm, killing the farmers, desecrating the military, Majestic shows up to the farm in a form of a cutscene where they declare that the invasion of Earth has started. They also alert us to an overlying bad guy named Silhouette, as that's who they get their orders from. Majestic is kind of like the Men in Black, except for way more evil than Will Smith and uh, that other guy. We also learn that killing enemies, probing them, or popping their brains out gives Crypto DNA that we can use to upgrade Crypto and his ship. It's pretty straightforward stuff, so let's just get right on to the next mission. The next mission takes place at the fair. Now this is the first mission I remember from being a kid, and you will see why in a minute. We here we learn our hollow bob skill. This allows us to blend in with these filthy humans and walk among them. Ho now hollow bob's disguise does wear off eventually, so you have to keep the ruse going by scanning people's brains and hearing their thoughts. Name's 
illusion. You wouldn't want to lose concentration while surrounded by enemies. At the beginning of the game, this is funny. Every time you scan someone, you get a little comedic blurb. But as the game continues, you'll start to hear the same things over and over again or the same kind of thoughts over and over again. Mostly, you'll hear about how they want to cheat on their spouse or wanting to cheat on your spouse. And if you are scanning a scientist... It has to do with wanting to fornicate with alien corpses for some reason. Hell, there is people banging in this car right here. It really makes you think that this, what was going on in the writer's room, some kind of sexual frustration or maybe one of them got cheated on because everything in this game, the humor of the civilians is all about banging somebody else or getting cheated on or cheating on somebody else. It's a little weird. But also humor has changed throughout the years, so maybe that's nostalgia talking. Continuing anyway? <laughs> During the fair mission, we are tasked to find the dumbest person at the fair to be our test subject. Now, me being me, I went straight for the politician who definitely is written based off the mayor from The Simpsons. Just listen to him talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Town's doing great. Business is booming. Hope is on the way. Yada, yada, yada. Let's uh, barrel through this puppy so I can get down to the real business of governing. After scanning some brains, we settle on taking out Miss Rockwell because she is the dumbest person at the fair. She is perfect, apparently. So we implant a mind control device and lure her to our ship. Not in a creepy way. It's a little creepy. All right, it's creepy. We get her to our ship and send her in to get probed. And she, um, gets off on it. Uh oh! What's happening? Oh, God! Please! No! Oh! Oh, it, it tickles! <laughs> it's probing time! <laughs> Oh, yeah, right there. That's the spot. Oh, that is delicious. It's a little strange, to be honest. Black Force. A little odd. At least we get a palate cleanser after being a total Chad to Miss Rockwell. And by palate cleanser, I mean we get to destroy the entire fair. Explosions, throwing cars, tanks, and it doesn't get any better than this. Happy days, ladies and gentlemen. Happy days. Our next mission starts in a cow pasture, where we learn that there is glowing cows. Or maybe they're zombie cows. Those human fools! Clearly they've genetically altered these pathetic gas bags and turned them into radioactive exploding zombie cows! Oh, never mind. They're genetically modified exploding cows. Weird how I didn't get that. Well, as any alien would do, we use the cows to explode the army as one does. After literally using cows as a weapon, we are then tasked with hollow bobbing the mare so we can get to the press conference so we can keep the attention off the aliens invading Earth and back on the government and other conspiracy theories for a little longer, as well as we can learn more about the humans. So we disguise ourselves and work our way all the way to Town Hall. Giving this speech is pretty straightforward. After you hollow bob the mare, you get four choices. Pick the right one and the crowd is happy. Pick the wrong one and the crowd gets mad. The way this works is pick the dumbest answer or the one that makes fun of something else. And you're right. Though the interview we can learn of another city called Santa Modesta, which I'm guessing is going to be like Santa Monaco. So we know where we're going next, I guess. We're going to go and destroy Santa Modesta. Santa Modesta is a beach town with bright, vibrant colors and a fun, casual vibe of just hanging at the beach all day and relaxing. I actually really like the way Santa Modesta looks. Like, I would want to live here, aliens and all. So our first task is to find the alpha male, that being the mayor. And through a powers investigation, we figure out that he's at a pool party. It has nothing to do with these signs or the fact that we scanned human minds and we only ever hear about the pool party. We did this on our own, okay? We did it on our own. Now that we have read the minds, we get a tutorial on Majestic Agents and how they have devices to block Crypto's abilities. I personally hate reading tutorials as I'd rather learn in a quick prompt or learning while playing the game, but it may just be me, but I don't like tutorials that are done with, you know, text. Bleh. So we can scan people at the party. Plant an implant in the Majestic Agent so he will dance. This allows us to scan the mayor and learn all we need to know. And now the fun part, to destroy and kill everyone. Now this, this I can get behind. We should note that every mission you get a sub-objective to do to get more stars and DNA to upgrade Crypto and his spaceship. For example, in this mission, it's to drown people at the party in a pool. So don't mind if I do. These are usually fairly simple, and if you forget to do it or end up at a different part of the mission where you can't do it because you can't always do it later, 
you can always just come back and do it again and then do the same mission and get your stars. I like this. It invites you back for the replaying without making you come back because it's necessary. This is one of the few games I would actually wouldn't mind coming back to replay the missions to do these stars. So what would you like to upgrade, you little ball of unbridled aggression? Did you hear that? Well, get used to it, because every time you want to level up, she says that. And by the end of the game, you will literally hate her for saying the same three quotes on rotation. You will literally want to kill the head of the alien race. Do we do a quick level up? We're back in Santa Modesta. The mission starts with some majestic agents talking about their brainwashing scheme. They have been using television stations. Sounds very similar to modern times, I guess, if you listen to some people on the internet. We decide, as the alien race that's invading Earth, that we need to brainwash the humans instead to make harvesting their brains easier. So we follow the men in black car to the television station. Once there, we scan Sleepy Ernst, the scientist behind the whole brainwashing technology, learn that he is using the technology to control the human race. Well, we can't have that now, can we? So we kill him, of course. Now we go bend some antennas to allow ourselves to broadcast our own Furion signal to control the humans. Unfortunately, it goes terribly wrong and their heads explode. Oh, well, we're moving on. It's crypto! This signal is too strong! Humans are weak! Their minds can't take that kind of amplitude! Quickly, crypto! You've got to bend the antennae before they... Ooh, that has to hurt. Ew. Disgusting. Crypto? Crypto! Where did you go? Snack time. Following up the television debacle, we are back in Santa Modesto to collect the overloaded brains from the heads exploding after our failed signal. But we don't talk about our failures, only the humans. So we're off. We also use a very underrated piece of alien hardware, one that's not really talked about a lot in Earth lore. We use the anal probe. This little gem of technology allows us to remove human brain stems through their butt. Not bad technology, really, if you think about it. Quite efficient. It's probably the quickest way to take a human's brain. So we run around collecting brains for our research, all while being shot at by the police and majestic agents. In this mission is where you, we really feel the downside to the transmog for ammo, as every time we get overrun, and sometimes it wouldn't even drop the ammo type we needed. Once again, I think a different ammo system would have been helpful. Either way, we completed it and we headed back to the mothership for upgrade and our next mission. After our level up, we head to the next mission. This next mission is still in Santa Modesta, but it's more scanning. This time we're scanning scientists to see what their connection to the Majestic Agents is. So we hollow bob ourselves as the high school jock guy and start scanning. The first scientist we scan tells us how his nine seasoning recipe has made people Republican and hostile to anyone who's different. Already we can tell that they are using food as a form of manipulation. But off we go to scan more scientists. The next one is in an ice cream truck. Scanning his brain tells us that he doesn't want to eat at the diner as it will make him a mindless drone. Yet he still goes to eat because it's so good and he just wants to be a mindless drone, I guess. He's making the conscious decision, so we have the right to make fun of him. Seems our hunch is right, though. Off to scan more. And then to scan more. And then just a little more scanning. If you don't like scanning, then this might not be the game for you. As you spend a lot of time scanning, personally, it didn't bother me as a kid it, and it didn't bother me as an adult either. But... It is a lot of scanning. After all the scanning, our hunch is confirmed. The majestic agents are using food as a population control. So naturally, we blow up every food place and then some other buildings for good measure just to show the humans who is the alpha chad in this group. After destroying the buildings, we get another task. This task is to destroy the scientists' vehicles before they leave Santa Modesta. So far, this is our longest mission yet, and it's actually kind of nice to have a longer mission with more levels and more structure to it. So we chase down the ice cream trucks, driving the evil scientists, and then kill them. And we get another task. It's starting to feel like we might be ramping up to a boss fight and or a bigger level kind of mission. The next task is to capture a majestic agent. Well, we found one, so we take him, dance, and like an idiot, we accidentally hollow bobbed him, so now we have to wait for the disguise to wear off. So we wait, and wait, and wait, 
I don't know how to remove the disguise, so we wait. Oh, it's finally done. Let's just pick him up and carry him to the spaceship. Once there, Crypto interrogates him to get information on all while the police and military wait patiently for us to be done. After putting the gi giant face probe on him, he finally gives us the answer we needed. We learned that Area 42, fear on DNA testing, and Rockwell crash, Rockwell being where the clone crashed, so that's going to be where we're off to. Off to Rockwell, where we can now find our clone friend. Don't it, monkey boy? You want it to stop, don't you? Then give daddy what he needs. Mind control experiment. Rockwell movies. Fear on DNA. Area 42. Uh -huh. Prepare to return to the mothership, Crypto. We're going back to Rockwell for the last time. We start this cutscene that has some of the worst voice acting, or best. It's hard to tell if this is a parody of Footloose or Majestic recruiting commercial. Two-bit town. Nothing ever happens. No dancing. No rock and roll. Why, if it weren't for that juke joint down by the river, I'd never get my rocks off. You said a mouthful, Cupcake. There's a whole wide world out there, and we're missing it. But where can we go, Billy? This town's a one-way ticket for wild hearts like you and me. It's tearing me apart! I don't know the difference, so we're just going to go with, it's here. It's a cutscene, so let's watch it. But then, we meet Silhouette for the first time. Dressed in all leather and wearing a gas mask, they are a strikingly menacing foe. We then get sent to the movie theater drive-in, where we kill some agents, then we play our own movie while fighting off police agents and majestic agents. This is the first mission I really don't care for. I think it, if it had the movie and had some sort of audio in the background while we were fighting and we could listen to what they were watching and see how we're manipulating through the movie, then it would be a lot better. But sadly, it does not. So it's just a bunch of people sitting in cars watching a silent movie while there's a literal gunfight with explosions behind them and people flying through the air and not one person notices. Now, I have been to drive-ins as there was one just outside of my local hometown. And it's not that loud. You would definitely hear gunshots. And you would for sure hear people being thrown around and propane tanks exploding. I know we are nitpicking a bit, but I'm allowed. This is my channel. And I'll do what I want. So, we finish. Back to the ship. We do an upgrade. Next mission. It's time to start our war with Majestic. We get a new weapon. A bomb slinger. Ionizer thing. I like this weapon, but sadly, even upgraded, I don't think it does enough damage for what it actually is. This is another mission where the transmog ammo thing is just not ideal. We'll just take a look. So we run around the map, desperately trying to get ammo for our ionizer, as well as our corrosive acid gun, all so we can do damage to Majestic properly. I am ashamed to admit that this took way longer than it should have. For such a simple mission. After doing the damage to the Majestic property, we are sent back to our saucer to destroy the Majestic base. And even here, we have a lot of very not ideal ways to get ammo. I only say this because later in the game, there's a drop system for ammo, both for the saucer and crypto. So I don't know why they couldn't have been throughout the entire game, as it makes the whole transmog thing kind of obsolete at that point. And it was so nice to have the ammo actually dropping. Taking out the Majestic bases though, and other assets is easy enough so moving on to the next mission back to the ship level up and do our next mission let's get it done i would like you guys to meet our good friend crackpot our scientist and only human that we allow to help us on our entire journey we really don't get to know why we trust this guy over the rest of the human race but uh here he is so we're gonna follow him as you should with a crackpot crackpot leads you to a chef that we need to get into the base once inside the military base, the chef leads us to our ultimate target, Bert Wither. Here is probably one of my favorite mechanics in the game. The follow implant is like a command that makes them follow you. I think this should be in every single game that has ever had an NPC follow you. It allows the player to control the pace of the quest rather than having the AI control the pace of the quest. How many times have you had an AI NPC follow you, but then they get stuck on rocks or a wall or won't move as fast as you? And, or they just are scared of literally everything, not destroy all humans. The alien is in control and his brain implant literally makes the human 
not give any um any bad words there we go yeah that's family friendly i know it's a simple thing but i really enjoyed this so we get bert to the spaceship and off we go prison break complete now this has to be the hardest mission that we've done yet in destroy all humans you were tasked with defending two broadcast towers as bert withers narrates a script given to him by you the aliens this is a defend the towers wave-based mission now remember in between each and every level we have been leveling up our character and we are still struggling with this this right here what you're seeing on screen is just wave one we died more times than i ever will ever admit to you guys because i am mr flatface and i'm never wrong and i'm never weak but anyways let's move on so a few tries uh yeah definitely a few we eventually found the sneaky rocket launcher guys who were outside of the fence shooting in once we found them we were able to complete wave one we failed wave two two times before we got lucky and managed to aggro them while we were all on the roof making killing the tanks and the enemies very easy now for wave three where there is the military tanks and majestic mechs we just repeated what we did in the second wave where we hit on the roof and we managed to beat this mission this was a massive difficulty spike compared to the rest of the scan and destroy buildings that we were doing though you do feel accomplished once you beat it i do like the mission structure and destroy all humans it's both the same and different with these little splashes of completely different mechanics or style of games so now that we have completed our broadcast we are off to the ship for some upgrades and our next mission Woo -wee. <clears throat> all right ladies and gentlemen i think we need to rapid fire the rockwell missions as there is a lot of rockwell missions up first we are inspecting the crash site of the clone at the start of the game once arriving at the original site we get tasked with finding more of the furion technology that's scattered around we also have to break into the military base to get the rest of the technology breaking into the military base is as easy as it gets you just talk to this guard as dressed up as another guard or even better jump the fence our next task is to break into the majestic base which is literally right behind the military base they're actually connected we scan some mines and then we break into the building i use breaking in very lightly in this situation because it's as simple as hitting the open the door button on the console which is right outside the door that you need to open once inside we learn that our clone was already dissected and is now dead I really thought you'd be alive. Ah, oh, Crypto. Look what they've done to us. Laid us open like an animal. How could intelligent creatures do this? Okay, monkeys. You want a war? You got a war. Crypto flies into a fit of rage about this, destroying the clone, his saucer, and then destroying as many humans as possible. This is the first time we see some real emotion out of Crypto, instead of his classic satire and sarcasm. Well, we killed everything and now we're back to the ship. Upgrade, next mission. We are back at the same Majestic base. This time we have to go and see what the experiments Majestic is doing in the basement of this compound. So we head back to that room where we found the clone, head up the stairs, and activate the console. Head down the hallway, use the elevator, and end up in the basement. Where we find that the humans have used Furion DNA to make psychic humans. This absolutely pisses Chris Crypto off and his boss, so he has to wipe out all the mutants. With prejudice, of course, and all the research with them. Once back on the surface, we get to get into our ship and destroy the base. If there is one thing we learned, is you don't mess with Crypto and his people, or you will pay the ultimate price. Enjoy this little montage of us destroying buildings. Also, mission complete, back to the ship, upgrade, next mission. We are still at the Rockwell base. This time though, we're at the Air Force part of it. Our first task is to scan military officers who apparently are all banging each other's wives. Once again, it seems like the writers had some sort of sexual frustration and or one of them had been cheated on with one of the other members of the team because it's really hard not to draw that conclusion with all the innuendos that have been written into this script. 
isn't ready yet. The X-13 was working just fine in the trials last week. There have been a few, uh, hiccups. Hiccups? Armquist is headed here right now to see this thing fly. Are you telling me it can't? We've had some setbacks. I'll give you a setback. I'm gonna bring your whole goddamn agency up on charges. This is gross incompetence. Save it. Why don't you show your guests the nuke instead? I didn't pay 40 million dollars to see another goddamn nuclear test. I paid to see the best goddamn fighter plane ever built. Ah, screw it. I'm going down to Sector 13 myself and find out what the hell's going on. General. You don't need to go to Sector 13. The test flight will go ahead as planned. What? A second ago, you said the X-13 wouldn't fly. I said it wasn't ready, but it will be. Your demonstration will go on as scheduled. Trust us. We're the government. Anyways, we find that the general, and in the cutscene, we also learn that there's dissension in the ranks between the Air Force and the Majestic Agencies. And that the Majestic Agencies say the prototype wouldn't fly, and the Air Force wants it to fly. We also learned that there's a nuclear warhead on base, so clearly we will have to use that at some point. That's just me using my powers of deduction and many years of gaming. After scanning the general's mind, we learned that if we kill the scientists, the prototype will not fly. So, us being the aliens don't want it to fly, so that's what we're going to do. The catch is, though, we have to make it look like an accident when we kill the scientists. So the first guy we trick into walking onto mines using our mind control. It was kind of subtle, to be honest with you. The second, we make the barbecue explode. And the final guy, we drop a box on his head. And if I know subtle, killing three people in the span of about five seconds, and they all happen to all know how to fly the prototype, is probably the most subtle way to do it. No one will ever catch on. You know for sure the scientists are dumb, though. After that, it's time to destroy everything. Again, it, it, it is kind of crypto style. So we shoot, we blow up, and we cause havoc. Once the destruction meter is filled, we can head off to the hangars and break in and see that the prototype... So, we drop in through the hatch, kill the people inside, and then we sabotage the prototype. Then, there's a cutscene, where the Majestic agents get in trouble from Silhouette, and they seem to be plotting a trick to capture us. Mission complete. And back to the mothership. Upgrade. Next mission. Make it good. We've had a breach. Small word for a big problem. Somebody got past the guards, snuck into Hangar 12, and wrecked the place. Our little gray visitor? Looks that way. Which means you didn't catch it. We came pretty close. Close doesn't count, Agent. The second it sets foot on base, I want it captured. And don't tell Armquist. We don't need any more help from the military. Call me when you've got it. Whatever you say. If you've been here this long, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. This is a longer video, so I am going to do a shameless plug in the middle. I hope you're enjoying the content, but let's continue. This mission starts with a cutscene where the Air Force General and the Marine General meet. Personally, I served in the military, and I found this joke between the two of them pretty funny. General Armquist, good of you to come. Thought you might be too busy running damage control out in California. Never too busy to watch the Air Force fall flat on its face, Jack. I was in the Army myself and can attest this kind of banter does exist, and it is about... It's about the equivalent to what they just did in this. So good on good on the writers for that joke. At least it didn't have to do with banging a wife. They then test the prototype and it crashes, where both generals get really, really mad. I enjoyed this cutscene probably more than I should have, but uh, that's our little secret. So we break into the testing range. We implant a mind control chip into the guy to drive the nuclear bomb for us. Then we protect it as it travels down the road to the airstrip. 
We have to stop platoons of met gunmen, mines, which I don't really know why you'd put them on the middle of your own connecting road to your own base and your own airstrip. But hey, I'm not in the US military, I'm Canadian. Then worst of all, you have to fight cows. Not just any cows, you have to exploit you have to fight exploding zombie genetically mutated cows. The worst kind of cow. Once we get it to the airstrip, after some failures, we then have to defend it. This is very simple actually. We use our newly upgraded brain exploder that spreads to even more people now, and it pretty much defends itself. It's a nice side effect, is that you also get the sweet, juicy DNA to upgrade crypto. Now that you've defended the nuke, you have to race to your ship to get out of the way of the explosion. This is another moment I'd like you to kind of look at. I can tell you that they play tested this game thoroughly, unlike a lot of games that come out today, because you honestly feel like you will not make it to your ship in time. The distance that they picked between you and the bomb is just the right amount to make it seem like you're not going to get there in time. You dash and you fly and you try your best, but you still feel like you won't get there in time. It's really good on them and I give them high props for that. So, end of mission, cutscene, back to mothership, upgrade, next mission. You're starting to get the trend here? We continue our journey back in Santa Modesta. This is a filler mission where you have to protect some drones as they scan buildings to see what they're made of and how they're able to be constructed. Literally, even the boss lady doesn't really know why she's doing it. So she just kind of gives you a monologue of just get it done. So let's move on. The task after protecting the drones is to destroy Santa Modesta. Now we're talking. Our submission is to destroy military structures. I find the city destruction parts are super fun. Like what person? in their right mind, wouldn't want to destroy entire cities with death rays as an alien race. As a child, that was my dream, so maybe that's why I got fond memories of this. Everyone, the correct answer is everyone wants that, just so we're clear. If you didn't know the answer, that's the answer. It's everyone. End of the mission, back to the mothership, upgrade next mission. There is a pattern here, ladies and gentlemen. Mission rapid fire is almost done, so I just want to give a quick monologue of my own thoughts. This is the longest video on my channel by a long shot, and this is definitely the longest script I've written so far at just a little over 10,000 words. This has always been a goal of mine to do a full length game review that is also in depth. I have always enjoyed content from creators like Death of a Game or Josh Strife Hayes. These are channels I look for for inspiration while writing this script and making this channel. I hope that I'm doing this video and them justice with my attempt at a full game review, but I guess we'll have to see. That's up for you to decide by hitting the like, commenting, and subscribing. Anyways, the next mission starts with a cutscene where Crypto gets shot out of the sky as he travels in his flying saucer. Listen to how shocked he is. Curse you, pathetic humans! Ah! The voice acting is so good, then also so bad sometimes. Then weirdly, we end up in a first-person cutscene for some reason. It's just a weird choice in a third-person game to randomly have this first-person cutscene that kind of is weird. It's just really off-putting. All the impact of being captured by the humans is removed when we break out of the cage in like literally two seconds and find a gun immediately. Kind of lessens the impact of the moment of getting captured if you're going to do this. At least make it like a stealth mission with no powers until we gather all our parts. Nope. I just explode the machine and move on. So now we have to gather the rest of our gear and scan the workers for hints where the ship is. It wasn't until now that we had to talk to this guy all the way on the top of the screen that I realized we don't actually have any missions where we have to use our jetpack. I guess saying you don't know what you got until it's gone is true. We find our jetpack and fly up to the guy on the crane and learn the password for the barge. For our first time in this game, Crypto's voice matches his face. Marilyn, will you take me to the island now? I got a kick of, out of this. So off to the island we go. Once at the island, we have to free our saucer. This is simple enough. We have to gather its power core. There's three on the boat and two on the island. This is more time consuming than hard. Once that's done, Blow the place up. Simple. This ends the rapid fire mission review part of this video. Believe it or not, we just covered 11 missions here. So now we're entering the end game. Ooh.
We are now off to Capital City, the home of the White House, the President, and the start of our endgame content. Our first task here is simple, reach the White House. Once that's completed, we get tasked with, you'll guess it, yeah, you got it, it's scanning more scientists, to see if they know anything about the President, which they should, seems how they're American. After doing the scanning, the mission says, talk to the scientists, but really that means holla bob him. For some reason, I don't know how the correlation wasn't there. Off to the octagon we go. I like how it's not the pentagon in this game. It's the octagon. It gave me a laugh and it's giving me a laugh now. Immediately upon arriving there, I recognize this place from my childhood. This brought me a lot of frustration as a kid. I get this feeling of dread in my stomach. So you know whatever happens here was brutal and has scarred me for life. And it's just a weird thing because I haven't completed the game yet. So I don't know what it is. So I was expecting some sort of massive thing to happen when we walked in here. But nothing did happen. So it's, I'm very concerned for later in the game. We get a cutscene where we learn from Silhouette that they are adding another element to the military, that being Majestic. So there is definitely a power struggle happening and it's quite interesting to see how this is gonna play out. Crypto, the humans must not be as utterly moronic as we thought. Your scout ship has been discovered. Now, I have not mentioned this the entire time because I thought it was hidden. But we always park our ship like just off the sidewalk or on the beach or like in an alleyway. Hell, we've even had it sitting in the sky over the military base and no one has ever looked or said anything. Then now out of nowhere, they can see it and find it and are trying to sabotage it. Now this will happen a few more times before the end of the game. And once again, it's just a weird design choice and it kind of ruins the other parts of the game because that means that the civilians have seen your ship the entire time and just haven't said anything and or cared. So all of a sudden, now they do. <laughs> After saving our ship, our next mission is to follow Armquist to a meeting, where we holobob ourselves and join that meeting. Following him is not hard. Getting into the meeting is not hard. And sabotaging the meeting is also not hard. Now the fight against Armquist is hard. He's a three-stage boss where every single stage means more explosions and more speed on his part. Once a game, the game literally did nothing to prepare us for this. I truly hate when games do that. Teach us the mechanics throughout that lead us up to this fight. But needless to say, we get it done, and in a cutscene, we convince Arnquist that we are the same, and we truly just want what's best for human beings, and we are all, really, deep down, just human beings trying to find our way through the world. What do... <coughs> what do you mean? I mean, this ridiculous war. We could have worked together, you and I, to forge a new future, a common future of peace and prosperity for our two peoples. Just put me out of my misery, will you? I'm serious. You... you didn't want to destroy us? Of course not. We were as scared of you as you were of us. Deep in our hearts, I think what we really wanted was to be just like you. Really? Really. I guess, at the end of the day, we really are all just human beings. Then we shoot him in the face. Back to the mothership. Our next mission is to follow the President's motorcade to the White House where they will be performing a press conference because when is a politician not at a press conference who not ah, we'll move on following the motorcade is easy enough distract the majestic agents so the alien diffusers don't mess up your holobob and you will get there easy enough that's it it's that simple ladies and gentlemen once to the press conference you will learn it was a trap all along bum 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 they did foreshadow it earlier so you should have saw this coming to be honest it was also set up by the majestic agents so you simply kill them all with your superior skill then you work your little alien butt over to the real press conference. Once there, you, uh, uh, to put it in nicer terms, impeach, aka kill the president. And then you take out his secret service. Once again, through the humans have found your saucer. Human explosives, but it looks to me like they're laying enough to breach the power cells. That could vaporize the entire city. Now boss alien says it's enough explosives that the humans are using to destroy your saucer that it will level the entire city. But when you get there and you use those same explosives to kill the humans, they are barely better than a firework. Consistent, consistency game devs. Consistency. Well, another mission in the books, ladies and gents. Off to the mothership, level up, and let's continue. Well, we killed the president. 
and we took out a secret service. So uh, we got to continue our journey within the capital city. This time we're going to commit voter fraud. We are tasked with killing the senators before they vote in a new president. And crypto literally does say, doesn't that mean that they would just put the vice president in charge? But no, for some reason, they're going to have every senator in the entire United States come to the city where the president was just assassinated and the entire Secret Service destroyed to hold a vote to have a new president instead of holding a regular election or just, you know, putting the vice president in charge. It's a weird world they live in, to be honest with you. So you have to kill the senators before they vote. A new president in. This is easy enough. Survive the ways of enemies while killing the senators before they vote. This mission is not hard at all. It's just very time consuming because you have to wait for the senators to spawn. So moving on. Like when I said that the entire time I thought that our flying saucer was actually camouflaged, but then randomly the game decided that it's not and the humans would attack it and that we had to keep rushing back to save it. Um, this time we just parked it in this like empty construction lot between two skyscrapers on like a busy street corner in downtown capital city. And uh, we didn't even try to hide it this time at all. Um, but I digress. This mission has us destroying the Tesla coils and military anti-air guns. We bounce around the city pretty much uncontested, blowing up military top secret locations with little to no pushback at all. Though it is nice to have some verticality to the game. And it also is nice to have a mission where we get to use our jetpack for more than just running away from enemies. Once we, uh, we do all this, we can jetpack, we go over to our saucer and we get into it and we go all like Independence Day on the city, shooting down buildings and Tesla coils alike. This is a great mission for just the fun destructive side of, you know, crypto and the alien invasion thing. Just had fun, okay guys? Well, we finally get to meet the mysterious person called Silhouette. Silhouette, I presume. You don't look like a general. You don't look like a little green man. Thank you. So, waving the white flag, huh? All the monkeys got together, scratched their heads, accepted the inevitable. That sense of humor. Just like your- Like my what? Uh, file. Your dossier, Crypto, said you were quite the Joker. I think I never told you my name. No, I suppose I have your brother to thank for that. Patriot. If you had to put up with politicians playing grab ass all day long, you'd wear a mask too. Me, I get my kicks the old fashioned way, beating up bad monkeys. Funny, that's just what Crypto 136 said. Of course, he was a real cut up too. Well, so much for plan A. What's that? That, my gender deprived friend, is plan B. The end of your insidious invasion. A champion even you can't defeat. The greatest political mind of the 20th century in the greatest weapon ever built by man. Behold, the robo -prez. We meet them outside the White House, where they lured us here under the guise that humanity has given up and they are surrendering. They're giving us the key to the earth basically, is what Crypto believes. But no, it's a trap. Oh no, who saw that coming? Also, twist alert, and no, I didn't feel bad for the spoilers, but Silhouette is a chick. What? I like the fact that she had to hide her identity because of the era in which her character lives, which is the Cold War era, where men, in fact, would never have listened to her if she hadn't pretended to be a man herself. It's kind of a cool, more deep meaning in a game that's all about like cows pooping and anal probing 
I did like that feature. This is a great, like, world building. You actually feel like it's Cold World era. Anyway, she introduces you to Roboprez, the ultimate in Trump card in democracy. <laughs> you see what I did there? Yeah, yeah moving on. Roboprez is a three-stage boss fight. He's a giant mech, so of course he's going to be three-stage boss fight. But you get to fight him with your saucer. It's a pretty decent fight. Once again, every stage means more explosions and more bullets. Simple as that. I do think Robo Perez has a bit too much health, as it. I will continue to say more health does not mean better or harder game devs. It just means the fight is drawn out. That's all it is. And in an action-packed fight, too much time in a fight can take the fight from awesome to a very tedious experience. As we fight Robo Perez, every time we finish a stage of his health bar, he will run towards the octagon, which I still love that name. And by the time you get to the octagon, Roboprez is in full rage mode and is just spamming his attacks. And you have to, like, it took us a few tries, but once you get it, he is defeated and you have to now go and meet Silhouette. Remember earlier I told you I remembered the octagon and it had stirred up memories for me? And I remember why now. Silhouette has so much health and then has shields on top of it and mobs of enemies to fight for her and massive area of effect attacks. Fighting her is a real pain and it takes so much time. Take her down a stage and she does this weird bounce thing around the map until she eventually lands at a spot nowhere near you to heal. This is incredibly frustrating as your weapons do little to no damage to her it seems. So the fight just drags on and on and on and on. I could see why as a kid, with clunkier controls, worse resolutions, and just a far worse technology age, how this fight would have been one that I would have remembered to this, this, this very day. This child in me is rejoicing that I beat, you know, Silhouette in one go, but who knows, maybe it's just muscle memory after probably doing this for way too long as a child after defeating silhouette she gives us her death speech where she says the majestic agency will always win and all well who cares move on you beat me i can't believe you actually beat me they never do you know you don't look so hot majestic we'll never give up the struggle to resist you alien freaks struggles over babe furons won human zipperoni you think you won you think america is the only human civilization on earth that's what all the americans seem to think at least the ones i scanned smug little insect there are three billion people on this planet. And everywhere there are humans. There is Majestic. Sorry, doll face. Without you, Majestic's just a bunch of dudes in crappy black suits. Majestic. MJ. Twelve. The twelve. All over. Ah. Over the world. Attention, humans. I am Cryptosporidium of the planet Furon. This planet is now a territory of the Furon Empire. Resist this. We then move to a cutscene where the president 
announces that the human population is not under attack by aliens and that there is no aliens. It's just communists, but not to worry, the Americans have won. What I did find interesting throughout my playthrough of Destroy All Humans is how much the political jokes and the, the, the weird things that the game said kind of follow today's politics. Now, I'm not a political channel, but it's hard not to draw the conclusions between the president loving ice cream and the media manipulating us and then the weird virus attack. It's just, we lived through all this and two decades ago, this game had an entire plot based around all this stuff done in a funny, fancy way. I'm not saying what's happening today is funny or fancy. I'm simply saying it's kind of interesting that you can draw the conclusion. That means that the game was written well enough that the jokes still land 20 years later. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of Destroy All Humans. So what it was the purpose of this video? Well, it's simple, really. I wanted to find out if my nostalgia for this game was warranted. Does the gameplay hold up by today's standards? And is the kid in me satisfied by my journey that we have now gone on decades later? I would say Destroy All Humans has passed on all fronts. I truly enjoyed my time with this game, from cows pooping to satire humor that now as an adult I get even more. Destroy All Humans is just an absolute core memory for me in gaming, and I am happy to say it remains so as an adult. Though now that I am an adult, I really wonder what's up with all the people wanting to cheat on each other in this game. I do believe the gameplay holds up to today's standards, and the upgraded graphics definitely do. It really freshened up the look. I will say the humor is very refreshing in 2022 when the wor whole world is just whitewashed and don't say this in case of offending someone. Sometimes it's nice just to exist and destroy all humans does this. It just exists as itself. The little Mr. Flatface in me is looking back on destroy all humans fondly and now gets to look forward on destroy all humans and be able to say the nostalgia was worth it. Nostalgia rankings will look like this in the As I Remember series. It will be on a scale of 1 to 5. 1 being I don't remember the game properly at all, or the game missed expectations completely. With 5 being it is everything I remembered and is exactly met my expectations. This will be more forgiving than the video game reviews that I also do on this channel. It's based off just my own memories, so it's easier to rank off myself and nothing else to compare it to. We're not reviewing the game, we're reviewing my memories of the game. So with that being said, I give Destroy All Humans a 5 out of 5 on my nostalgic, my nostalgic scale. It was exactly how I remembered it and met my every expectation at every corner. Perfectly. I will for sure be going back to finish all the challenges and probe more humans, and I probably will be reviewing the other games within the series on this channel at a later date. I thoroughly enjoyed my time with this game. I hope you enjoyed the much longer content and more scripted game slash walkthrough slash playthrough content. I want the As I Remembered series to be kind of like a review, but more on a review of the mind and how my memories are of a game. I also think it would be fun to document to my childhood games that I liked and see how they hold up by today's standards and to see if what I remember them to be is what they actually are. I can't wait to do this in the future and I may be in 10 years, 20 years, I'll review Destroy All Humans again and see if it holds up then. I enjoyed my playthrough and I enjoyed hanging out with you guys on this very long journey. I have been your host, Jordy Index, a man of many faces and even more opinions. And this was my journey through memory lane with Destroy All Humans. If you enjoyed the content, please leave a like, consider subscribing as it would mean a lot to me. Is there a game from your childhood that stands out? Let me know in the comments below. I can safely say that Destroy All Humans was exactly as I remembered it. Now, I think it's time to do some eagle dives with Altair. Until next time, I have a faceless army to raise. I hope you have a great day.